reminded of the Ossifer, of the Ossifer who came racing across town in his cruiser. He showed up at a house, a 911 call. He got into the house, and there was a woman standing in the middle of the kitchen, and her husband sprawled out on the floor. The officer said, what in the world's going on? And she said, I have told him over and over again, when I am cleaning the kitchen to stay out and do not walk across my wet kitchen floor. The officer took a step back. He called the sergeant at the station and he explained to the sergeant what was going on and this and that. And it was a very unusual call. And so the sergeant said, well, did you arrest the woman? And the officer said, no, sir. This, the floor is still wet. Got a one sentence sermon for you today. Thank you, Peyton, for helping us out on our media. Nate Bittinger on our camera. Bill Lesser on our sound. Thank you all for serving today. I am super stoked that you are in church. Thank you for coming today. God bless all y'all's souls. Exercise. Now, I hate that word. Let's just stop right. I should have found a whole better word. That, that ruins everything right there. Your right to give orders. Now we're getting somewhere. Who likes to give orders? Who likes to be the boss? Raise your hand. Amen. All right. Three of us are being honest. Make sound decisions. And enforce obedience. Your spiritual authority today is you have the ability to make decisions give orders, and enforce obedience. In your life and in the life of your marriage, in the life of your family, and in the life of everywhere you go, your job, your, your occupation, your school, whatever it may be, you have spiritual authority today, period. Four of you believe it. When we're done with this message, I want you to walk out of here believing beyond a shadow of a doubt you have spiritual authority on this planet because of the name of Jesus Christ. It's not Jesus. Jesus did not have you to be born so that you could attend church on Sunday mornings. He allowed you to be born, like Jill Ferrer said, we have not talked about this message, so that you could be sent out and do something constructive for him. He had you to be born so that you could glorify him, so that his glory be all over you, that no matter where you go, you are a testament to his saving grace, wisdom, knowledge, miracle working power, and his glory. May his face shine upon you today so that you can turn to someone else and allow his glory to shine upon your friends and your neighbors. Today you have spiritual authority. Say, I have Spiritual authority. Period. Now stomp your foot. Adjective exclamation point. You know why? Because some of you walk around like you've been, like Eeyore. Like you're a spiritual Eeyore. Stop it! And start walking around like you're the incredible spiritual Hulk. Why? Because Jesus Christ has empowered you today with spiritual authority. Matthew chapter 4 verse 1. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit. The Spirit of God, mind you. The Holy Spirit. Into the desert. To be tempted and or tested, challenged, upset, beat up, pushed around by the devil. We just got done doing a series talking about devils and demons and good and evil and all those sorts of things. And then I go to the Bible and I'm reading through. There's actually, there's tons of times in the Bible where Jesus cast out evil spirits. He addresses demons, throws them out. He heals the sick. The blind can see. The deaf can hear. People are standing around and they are amazed. And then one day Jesus jumps up after the cross, after everything. And he says, all authority has been given to me. But whoosh, you're baptized and I give you all that authority. And I just skip to the punchline. Where does that authority come from? It comes from God 
Almighty. You might say, now look, look at the scripture. I have a trick question for you today. Who led Jesus into the wilderness? The Holy Spirit. What? What? Well, what kind of God would allow their only begotten son to be led into a challenging time, a wilderness experience, to be beat up, pushed around, and his own name thrown in his own face? Who would allow that? Who would, what kind of God would allow me? Now let's talk about you. Most of you don't care about Jesus, but let's talk about you. Now we're getting somewhere. What about you? Why would God allow me to experience this season in my life? I hate Jesus. He doesn't do that. And I don't like God and he this and he that. And look at me now. And by the way, why does there even have to be this trial, tribulation, da, da, da. I just want to be born on this earth, live a happy life, and die. Mostly just die. And be done with it all. That's what the devil wants for you. He wants you to want to be done with it all. Jesus is saying, follow me. We got a few tests and trials. And then after that, I will make you victorious, baby. Some of you are saying, well, oh, why do we have to play this game? Why can't we just all live in harmony? Why does there have to be this? And why does there have to be that? Why can't we just live in a place where it's sunny every day and the water bubbles up from the ground and there's no clouds in the sky and God stops the show and you can hear the record screech. And he says, uh, that's how we started this thing and y'all screwed it up. <laughs> that was the intention. Well, and then you might say, well, put me in Adam's shoes and I'll never do it. Put me in Eve's shoes and I'll never Really? You didn't ever screw it up? Cain did. Noah did. The rest of them did. When it got all the way back to you, you would have too. So here we are. Now Jesus being led out into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit to face the devil. He had fasted 40 days. He's hungry. When I'm fasting, I want a handful of potato chips somewhere around the 45-minute mark of my fast. I'm ready. I'm thinking just, just one, which turns into a half a bag and then two bowls of ice cream. And it's a mess. And Jesus is led out into the wilderness. It's been 40 days. He's hungry. He's part man, part God. I can't explain it. Some of you can maybe explain a little better than I can. But I'm telling you, he was hungry because he was part human being. You might say he didn't feel as though he was at the top of his game. He had to wake up on that 40th day with his mind made up that he's about to make a sound decision because he knows who his father is, he knows where he come from, and he knows where he's headed. And come hell or high water, these are the decisions that he's going to make. The devil comes to him and says, there's a bunch of stones on the ground. Uh, turn them into bread, why don't you? You're the son of God, I know you are. Turn them into bread and you can eat. And Jesus says, ah, da, 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 da. there is more to life than bread that you can eat physically. And Jesus says, it's written, we ought to live only by the word of God and every word that comes out of his mouth. And in fact, if you'd allowed Jesus to explain himself, he was standing there saying, I am the bread of life. And I can't not make the right decision now because of you, you, you. The devil takes Jesus to the highest part of the temple. He's looking over the Kidron Valley, the, Dal the, the valley of death. hundred feet to the bottom. He can see for a couple miles more. The devil says, just jump off of here, Jesus. And you know, you know that it's written that your foot will not even strike a stone because God the Father, your Father is not going to allow that to happen. And then Jesus says, it is written, y'all not act like a fool. 
Don't be stupid. Don't be dumb. Don't be this. Don't be that. Serve God only. And Jesus says it's written, do not test the Lord your God. Don't test him. Jesus and the devil go to the highest landmark around. The devil shows him. Now Jesus can see miles upon miles, hills, countryside, the city of Jerusalem. The devil says, Jesus, I tell you what, bow down and worship me here right now, and I will give you everything your eye can see. You see, we think when we read this story, that's, this is a no-brainer. It's a no-brainer. Well, sure, because you've already had two donuts today, three cups of coffee, and a pretzel stick. And you're not hungry. And you're feeling good. And you're sitting in a plush pew. Your wife's holding your hand. You're feeling pretty good. Well, that, Jesus isn't going to do that. He, he's not going to worship the devil and then forfeit all this stuff. It's an easy decision. No, it was not an easy decision. That's the point. The point is he had to pass a test, a challenge. He had to have the devil in his face. Why? Because he was seeking authority. That day, he proved to his father and he proved to the devil that he has the authority to just say no to the devil. This is the same authority that God wants to give you. That authority. You see, in America, the devil has taken us to the top of great mountains. Like I told you last week, the week before, I don't know when, I've got some pills and I actually have some breath mints in my hand right now. That's more in my pocket than most people have in the entire world to their name. In America, we have shirts and cars and this and that and blah, blah, blah. And apparently in Spain, they've got a better, ba- can you believe somebody's got a better banking system than you? you ought, somebody ought to fix that. It's ridiculous. You've got it all. You're at the top of the mountain. The devil is saying, all you got to do is submit to me and I will give you more TVs, a better cell phone, better car, all this stuff. Submit to me. And it's right in front of your eyes. Reach out and take it. If it feels good, do it. But Jesus, 2,000 years ago, passed this test already once. He is the Son of God, and He has the ability, like He did to His disciples late in the Gospels before He was taken up into heaven. He has the ability to blow on you today, and you receive the power of the Holy Spirit that you might have authority in the spiritual realm. Quit walking around this planet like you have no authority, like you can't put your foot down and make a sound decision today in the name of Jesus. That you can't give orders in the name of Jesus. Devil, demon, get out of my life and out of my house. Oh, there's no devil. There's no demon. I'm late for my appointment already, joker. And it's two till noon. I know you're not going to be done at noon. You're doggum right. You'd be lucky I'm done by 1.15. Jesus, he passed a certain test. It gave him strength. The devil knew who he was, he knew who he was, and God knows who he is. And he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he has spiritual authority. You have that same spiritual authority in your life. Why? Because it's the old song we used to sing in 1982, which was created in 1847 that my pastor thought was the greatest song on earth, but I never really got it. Now I forget the name of the song. You name it. He walks with me and he talks. Oh, so he lives. So he lives, I live. Oh, it looks like Jesus lost the battle. He died. Yes, he died. But now he lives. When the devil hits you so hard, it feels like you're about to take your last breath. Guess what? You can raise up your hand and say, because he lives, because he survived the desert, I will live. And I will survive this wilderness. Period. Because he lives, I live. 
period. He died. I'm going to die to self. Because he rose from the dead. Today, I'm going to rise from the dead. From the dead. When the doggone praise and worship team are tearing it up like a wild Comanche, instead of counting lights and tiling seals, which we don't have any, a few air conditioning vents, I'm going to worship the Lord. I'm going to get what I came here to get. I'm tired of punching a clock. This, I'm talking for you in case you didn't know. I'm tired of punching a clock. Why? Because Jesus has authority for you. This life is not about me. Life is not about you, but it's good news. God's not going to leave you stranded. He never leave you, never forsake you. He has power. Where are we at in Mark, Matthew chapter 10, Miss Peyton? Matthew chapter 10. God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit want to today give you authority. Don't care how old you are. Don't care what your physical limitations are. I don't care how stupid you are. I don't care how stupid the devil says you are. I don't care how lame the enemy says you are. I don't care how you feel when you woke up this morning. Today's a great day to recognize you have authority in the name of Jesus Christ to make a sound decision. To bark out orders in the spiritual realm. And to enforce obedience. You have that authority. Jesus summoned his 12 disciples and gave them authority. Say authority. Authority. You see, there's power and authority, and you can take both words and mesh them all together, and you can camo them, and they literally, sometimes they look the same, sometimes they're a little bit different. This word authority is greater than the word power and used in this sense. Power is something that is delegated to you. It's a one-time, one and done. It's the power to take a shot. But authority is the final answer. Jesus has all authority. He calls his 12 disciples together. He tells them, you're not going to need any money. You're not going to need this. You're not going to need that. You're going to waltz in the town and kick the devil clean out in my name. Matthew, Mark, Luke chapter 10. Then Jesus grabs up 70 disciples, tells them the same story. I'm sending you out so that you can cast out devils, demons, so that you can heal the sick. Been talking about Davy Watson's spiritual walk for some months now. His wife, Rachel, is in the hospital in Gainesville, Florida. She now has the record of the longest living person to live on ECMO machine in Gainesville, Florida. She made the history books. Why is that? It's because Davy recognized his wife was failing and failing fast. He recognized that he had to wake up one morning. This is out of David's, his words, not mine. He says, I woke up one morning. I had to make a decision. He made the decision to run to Jesus. He said, I have no spiritual nothing about me. Davy says, not Tom Golden. Davy says, I wasn't in church. I wasn't serving Jesus. I was doing this. I was doing that. I was caught up in America. And it's lie. He said, but when my, when my wife was dying, I had to wake up one morning and thank God he saw Jesus. And he made a sound decision. And he enforced obedience. He walked into that hospital room day after day after day. Matter of fact, he wasn't allowed in the hospital room. He would go to stand outside the hospital room. He would FaceTime his wife and the doctors and the nurses, and he would command devils and demons and sickness to be gone. He's just a normal guy. Like you and me, Elijah was a normal guy, and he prayed, and it didn't rain. Then he prayed again, and it did rain. A normal guy. You have that authority to call down miracles from heaven. You have that. My brain is a scrambled egg mess. Those that know me know that. And I got to wake up because I'm in the boat with you. I got to wake up every single day. 
And I got to say, dear God in heaven, do something with this brain. And I got to make decisions. I got to get bossy. You see, when I talk around the house, nothing gets done. People don't. It's like, I, like, I don't, it's like I'm speaking Spanish. Nobody understands a word I say. But in the spiritual realm, I doggum say something, and devils and demons have to flee because of the name I use. It's not because of me. I didn't die and come back to life. Jesus Christ did. And Jesus said, I'm going to tell you all something. I did this. And this is the way I want things done from now on. Because I did this. I have authority. And because you believe in me, now you are in me. And I'm in the Father. And you are in me. And now you are in the Father as well. I tell you the t- story all the time. When my cousin was a little kid, he got on the school bus. He was having some trouble in life. And he said, I, I started praying and I skipped Jesus and I went straight to God. You can do that. Go straight to God. He's going to send you back to Jesus. Jesus is going to funnel you down to the Holy Spirit and waboosh, you're going to have authority. It's pretty simple. I like what Miss Jill said. Did you listen to the tape online today? That's a 1980 term. I love using those old terms. Did you tape the service today? I just, it's fun to talk like that. What, what, what? She, she preached half the message today. Pastor David's message today. And my message, these, Jesus sending out the 12 and sending out the 70, I could have titled the message the same thing David's title was today. Who are you and what in the world are you doing here? Don't allow the devil to keep pushing you around when it's not necessary. (laughs) Not only is it not necessary, it's not the will of God for your life. You are to have authority in the spiritual realm. To make sound decisions, bark out orders, and command obedience. Enforce obedience. That's you. That's you. Ephesians chapter 1. And would you all please stand with me? Far above all rule and authority and power. These that now. But in the Hebrew, if we had time to go back to these terminologies, it would be super cool. Do the research. Far above all rule, authority, and power. You see, the devil that day, try, he tried to make Jesus believe that he had ultimate authority. He's a liar. He's the father of lies. One of the, most, one of the coolest stories in the Bible is when Jesus tells the disciples that their father is actually Lucifer because they are liars and he's the father of lies. Man, I just wish I'd have, that would have been so cool to watch Jesus preach and teach. Uh, today, let's not run to the father of lies. You understand if you're not running to Jesus, you're running to the father of lies. That's it. You, there's no middle ground. I say it often. Mr. Miyagi was a heck of a preacher. He told the karate kid not to walk in the middle of the road. Why is that? Because you get run over. You got to pick one side or the other. He got that from Jesus. Jesus says, don't be lukewarm. He says, be hot or cold. Do something, even if it's wrong. Now, that's not good preaching. Strike that, your honor. (laughs) My gifting is such and such. What's yours? What are you doing here? Jesus called the 12, then the 70, and then he charged us all. In Matthew 28, he charged us all. Go back to Matthew 28, Ms. Peyton, when Jesus says, I have all authority. And because you've invited me into your life, you have all authority. All, A-L-L, authority. You have it. You don't have to walk out of here feeling nothing. I did not have the most favorite week of my life this week. I am not happy today. But because of Jesus Christ, I have all authority to make a sound decision. I'm going to wake up and make the right decisions all day long. I will enforce obedience. And you can too. Would my prayer team please come down to the front of the sanctuary? 
If you'd like prayer for anything at all, anything at all, whatsoever, please, please come down and be prayed for. That's why we're here. We're not punching a clock. You know, here's what I like about our church. We're pretty super casual. We attract a lot of people that love Jesus but cuss a little bit. But I want you to know something. Even if you're so brand new or you keep listening to me week after week and you don't think that this stuff is for you. But I'm saying it is for you. That's why I tell you stories about Davey Watson. And, you know, and I'm just like you too. I'm just like you too. Ask my children, ask my wife, ask those that know me. I'm a human being. But today I'm choosing to make a sound decision and seek Jesus. To bark out orders in the heavenly realms. And to enforce obedience. That's not easy, but it is worth it. It's worth it. Oh, this is something else. I did not share this with the first service because I don't like them as much as you. <laughs> Jesus, this hit me like a ton of bricks. Now, I could be all wrong, but I'm going to say it anyway. When Jesus was, when, he, when, when the, he was preaching in the temple, and the Pharisees brought the woman that was caught in adultery. You remember that? So wrap your mind around the scene now. It's Jesus in the temple. The Pharisees, they don't like Jesus. They're trying to trap him and trick him into some things. And da, da, da. It's a long story. But they bring this woman. She's caught in adultery. Okay. He kneels down. He writes something in the stand, sand. He stands up, as the story goes. And Jesus says, all right, all right. So the, the book of uh, the law, Mo, actually it was not in the law. It was an, it was an oral tradition. Okay? It was not even written in the law. It's an oral tradition that the woman to be stoned. Okay? So Jesus played along with their little game. And then Jesus said, okay, okay, we'll play along with that. So uh, let's start the stoning. And whoever is without sin, cast the first stone. Super cool. Then everybody leaves, starting with the oldest person in the room. They drop the stone. Everybody leaves. Now, now watch as this unfolds. Jesus looks at the woman and he says, da, 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 now go and sin no more. And in my whole, now go and sin no more. And in my whole life, I've thought to myself, that was his, that was his, uh, like, uh, like, suggestion. That was his, that, that's what he was telling the lady to do, do that. But I don't see it that way after reading these scriptures like I had this week. He was enforcing obedience over that woman. He was telling her future. You are going to go and sin no more. That's you. I am enforcing obedience. And because you have seen me, because now you see the power invested in me, now I'm giving it to you. And he's saying, now, you can, now you're free. You're free. He wasn't bossing her around. He was saying, this is your new life. Welcome to it, baby. Now go and have a great life. Now go and sin no more. You're not going to want all that no more. You got a new life. This is super cool. That's us today. If we reach out. Yeah, some of us are reaching out. Others of us are being drugged and being thrown in front of Jesus saying, I, I, I got to kill them all. But Jesus is saying, all right, back up. I'll take this. I got this case. Jesus has your case. He's your advocate. It's a whole other sermon. He, it's like he's your lawyer. He speaks for you on your behalf. When the devil comes and speaks to you, you can take a step back and say, all right, Jesus, he's, he's back. And let Jesus do the talking for you. He's your advocate. If you want to make Jesus the Lord of your life today, if that's you, then I invite you to say this prayer of salvation with me. If you want him to be first in your life, if you want him to help you make these decisions, to enforce obedience, to make the call. If that's you, you want Jesus to take over these parts of your life and give you authority in the spiritual realm. Just repeat this prayer after me. Dear Jesus, I love you. I need you. Thank you for dying on a cross for me. 
Forgive me of my sins. Help me to go and sin no more. Let this be a prophetic statement over my life. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name, may his face shine upon you and may you have not the desire to turn back, but the desire to move forward in your faith and receive his authority. Get what you came for today. God has great things for you and I'm encouraging you this morning to allow God to finish what he has started in your life. We're going to sing a song or whatever we do. We're going to worship the Lord. If you have to go, it's okay. We're not going to, it's no disrespect or anything like that. We're not going to uh, condemn you. None of that stuff. If you got to go, it's okay. But if you can stay and allow God to finish what he started in you today, that'd be so wonderful. Be so wonderful. Take me there.